believe you can and you are half way there hello my shimmering stars today i shora grover welcome you all to this amazing platform of pw english students i welcome you all to your nexus batch and today we are going to start with lecture number 2 based upon your chapter classification of elements and periodic properties so students i hope so you have revised the previous session and you were able to solve the questions which were provided as your homework so what are we going to do today ma'am we are going to understand in depth about periodic table today in our session so i guess you all are ready for this particular class so let us start the session with a beautiful smile yes ma'am what are we going to cover in our lecture number 2 today so students the very first topic that we are going to start is going to be mendeleev's periodic table though i have given you a very you know small introduction of mendeleev's periodic table in your previous session but yes today in depth we will understand in depth about what is mendeleev periodic table and on which principle does it works moreover we are going to understand about the merits and the demerits of mendeleev's periodic table yes students so after that we are going to proceed with a very interesting segment of ours that is students the modern periodic table very very interesting yet very very important the next segment that we shall be doing is going to be the trick to learn modern periodic table so i will be providing you a certain trick so that you can memorize the periodic table on your own and you can write it down without looking up your book or notebook so are you excited for today's class the last segment students we are going to do is your question segment or question round so let us start with the very first topic of ours but let us meet your friends calcium and barium so basically uh, over here calcium says that hello shimmering stars have you revised your yesterday's class and barium is saying hi friends be ready for the modern periodic table today we are going to learn it because see each and every student of chemistry do have a periodic table at their home right so we are going to learn it it's it's very interesting you know so students let us start with the very first segment that is mendeleev's periodic table if i talk about mendeleev's periodic table in our previous sessions we have understood that till now each and every periodic table was based upon the simple law upon the simple principle that the physical and chemical properties basically of all the elements are dependent only upon the atomic weight that means uh, they are a periodic function of their atomic weight that means when you are going to arrange the elements you are going to arrange the elements with regard to their atomic weight or atomic mass i would say so till now we were following this concept and this concept was further taken over by mendeleev as well so he told that physical and chemical properties are periodic function of their atomic mass of whom ma'am of atomic mass now let me tell you according to mendeleev periodic table when he gave periodic table he gave up to 63 elements so he was the first scientist over there at that spot of time who gave you know uh, the elements who you know arranged 63 elements in his periodic table so that was wonderful achievement by him yes uh, and one more thing i have also told you in the previous class that he left some spaces for the for the undiscovered elements so this was also one more important key concept that he left he left empty space for undiscovered elements for example students when you will see the mendeleev's periodic table what he did you know after aluminum he kept some space okay after silicon he kept some empty space and he predicted that over here one one element will be discovered which has same properties just as of aluminum over here one element will be discovered which will, which will have the same properties as silicon he also named it okay he said that it will be referred to as eka aluminum eka aluminum and you know this element will be referred to as eka silicon now students in future what happened in future when the elements were discovered further we got to know that eka aluminum and eka silicon are basically the real elements there were some elements that were present below aluminum below silicon 
Yes, students, you heard it right. There were two elements. If you will see over there, that eka silicon is basically germanium. Eka silicon is basically germanium, which was discovered later on. Okay, which was which was discovered discovered later on. Yes, students. And over here, eka aluminium is your gallium. It was gallium. Okay, this was also discovered later on, students. So these two elements, which he referred to as eka aluminium, eka silicon, he predicted automatically when he was mentioning. He left some space in the periodic table yes, that yes, some elements will be discovered in future in the upcoming future, and their properties will be quite similar to that of aluminium and silicon, which he referred to as eka aluminium and eka silicon, which in future got to be called as gallium and germanium. Clear, students? Yes. clear clear so this we were we were studying also one more thing inert gases were not placed over there in the periodic table yet again moving to the further segments he mentally predicted the properties of those missing elements from the non properties of other elements in the same group for example he knew the property of aluminium so he uh, told that yes his property will be quite similar to the upcoming element so he referred to it as eka aluminium which is basically your gallium and he referred to as eka silicon which is basically your germanium clear students so i want you all to make notes side by side i'm getting you know i'm providing you one one minute you can pause the video you can write your notes because it is really very essential once you will be able to understand the chapter no need to again and again understand it it's just quite a revision you will require yeah okay students now moving further uh Mendeleev periodic table in detail what he told I already told you in the previous session about the horizontal uh, rows and the you know about the columns as well so let us see about it so basically he explained he divided into the periodic table into seven horizontal rows and eight vertical column seven horizontal rows and eight vertical column which I have already told you in the previous class now each group is divided into two subgroups see Whensoever there are groups, let us consider it has first group. So, it will be divided into two subgroups. One will be first A, another one will be second A. Okay, sorry. First A, another one will be first B. Similarly, second group will be divided as second A and second B in such a way. So, it over here says that when you divide the groups into further subgroups A and B categories, what do they indicate? In the Mendeleev periodic table only, subgroup A will indicate about the normal elements and subgroup B over there will be indicating about the transition elements that is the D, uh, D block elements. Okay, so basically this was explained in the Mendeleev periodic table about the subgroups that if it is written first day or if it is written second day, that means they are the normal elements and if it is written as the first B or second B, they will be the D block elements, the transition elements. Okay, moreover group number 8 is not subdivided into A and B. Rest if I will talk about the all groups, they were further subdivided but group number 8 is not subdivided. I guess this is clear to each and every one of you. Yes, students. Now, there were some merits and there were some demerits with regard to Mendeleev periodic table though it failed, right? So, there were some demerits due to which it failed but before that it helped us to understand a lot of things with regard to periodic table. So, let us see what were the merits first of all. What were the things that we got to understand with the help of Mendeleev's periodic table students, okay? So, the merits if I will talk about is elements with the same properties were placed in the same group. This was the first merit, okay? Just I have told you in the previous class also when I was telling you about the introduction that for example we have so many students here and there and if we have to see that in which class do they study I will gather them accordingly to their age and intelligence and I will separate them all together so based upon the properties they were assembled and they were kept in the same group so this was the very first you know merit that we studied with regard to the Mendeleev periodic table the next merit if I would say is it is easy to predict the properties of unknown elements of which gaps were left okay because the group's properties were quite similar to each other so if you know the very first elements properties you can automatically tell the second elements property similarly the third elements property in a same group right because same group will exhibit same kind of property so it was quite easy to learn the properties about the groups all the elements right next he made collective study of elements possible see I already told 
told you he basically arranged uh, 63 elements so he made it so easy that we could easily study the 63 elements all together because they were assigned according to their properties so if you are studying a particular group you are covering so many elements in that group right so that was a collective study that it made us easy to learn about the elements and their behavior Next is, he left gaps for the undiscovered elements, already told you about Eka aluminium and Eka silicon, that he left some gaps automatically, okay, but at that spot of time, he didn't knew that it was gallium and germanium. In the upcoming future, he got to know about it, yes. Now, students, come the demerits, but before that, I would request everybody to please kindly write all the four merits of this. Everybody, please write down all the four merits of this. <coughs> Yes, everybody, please write down all the four merits so that we can now write down the D merits. <clears throat> Let us start with the D merits. Grouping of dissimilar elements. What he did, he grouped dissimilar elements all together. For example, he basically grouped first A with first B all together. So, dissimilar elements were kept in the same group which was not to be happened, right? So, he grouped dissimilar elements all together. Next, separation of similar elements. He separated same kind of elements and kept it at different positions. Okay? So, this was also seen over there. And then, the isotopes. This was also one of the demerits. Let us talk about isotopes. See, for example, I'll talk about hydrogen isotope. It is protium, deuterium and tritium. These are isotopes of hydrogen. What are isotopes, students? If you don't know, let me write it over here. Who has same atomic number, same atomic number, but different mass number. But different mass number. See, students, you very well know that Mendeleev periodic, that Mendeleev, periodic table is based upon that this principle that physical that physical and chemical properties and chemical properties of elements of elements are a periodic function are a periodic function of their of their atomic mass so that means it only and only depends upon atomic mass and it will only and only students depend upon what it will only and only depend upon increasing atomic mass it will place elements according to the increasing atomic mass increasing a atomic mass is represented as a atomic number is represented as z i guess this you have studied in your class uh, you know 11 second chapter that is structure of atom so, students, uh, basically it says that it depends upon atomic mass, increasing atomic mass, right? So, if I am saying that here we will see it has atomic mass 1, it has atomic mass 2, it has atomic mass 3. That means they have different atomic mass, so they should be kept at different positions, but it was not done the same. They were only kept at the same position. So, this was again a very important demerit with regard to Mendeleev periodic table students. Everybody, please write it down. Yes. Here, if you want to mention, he placed group first and group uh, first, uh, sorry, first we all together, which was incorrect. Students, he placed them all together. They didn't have the same properties, though they have different properties, but kept together. Yes, students, moving on to the next demerit is anomalous pairs. Example, cobalt has atomic weight more than nickel, but nickel was kept after cobalt. So, this was again one of the important demerit. If you will take the case of argon and potassium. One more example, if you want to take argon and potassium, same happened in that case. Same happened in that case, okay. Uh, the element with the lower atomic weight was kept later on as occur in the case of cobalt and nickel, similar in the way in the case of argon and potassium. That the element with the small atomic weight was kept on later on and the element with the more atomic weight was kept further, before, okay. So, cobalt has atomic weight more than nickel, that means it should be kept after nickel, but it was not kept after nickel. Nickel was kept after cobalt. So, this was again one of the demerits. Now, the next important demerit is position of hydrogen atom. Ma'am, how is position of hydrogen atom a demerit for Mendeleev periodic table? How do you feel it is a demerit? See, 
hydrogen atom basically exhibits some properties with regard to group number first or as well as it also resembles the properties with another group so he could not explain that where should hydrogen atom with will kept in the upcoming you know uh, sessions you will see that there are some elements which uh, you know resembles the property of other elements so how do we are going to classify them accordingly because mendeleev periodic table based upon these demerits failed out but he has the modern form of periodic table clearly explained you all the properties so yes the position of hydrogen was uncertain because it exhibited two groups properties and it was very difficult for mendeleev to classify them according to which group it should be placed either it should be placed at you know the group 1 or it should be kept in the case of non metals where it should be kept yeah so this was again a huge problem at that spot of time so these were demerits i guess this page also you all have written students quite easy very good now students let us read from ncert highlight see from ncert book if you are going to open up i have written some of the important key points not the complete ncert but yes important key points which are really very essential so what you have to do is you have to take a highlighter or a pencil that you have with you and you have to underline these key points which are given in your ncert so the very first ncert highlight that i am mentioning over here is let us see about with regard to the topic mendeleev periodic table what which were the ncert highlights the very first is while dobernier initiated the study of periodic relationship it was mendeleev who was responsible for publishing the periodic law for the first time so this question can be asked in your examination that dobernier's trade now what was dobernier's trade let us take a quick review ma'am dobernier's trade was based upon the three elements See so again and again. Let me tell you, if we are getting something like this, which is already done in the previous session, I will be writing all over here again, so that you can revise again and again. So according to Dobernier's trait, it was based upon the three elements that the you know the properties of the middle element is basically not the properties. If I'll talk about the atomic weight, atomic weight of middle element of middle element. is equal to is equal to arithmetic mean of arithmetic mean of first and third element arithmetic mean of first and third element okay so this was all about the dobernier trait that we studied okay general example you can take of lithium sodium and potassium now he said that while dobernier initiated the study of periodic relationship that he started basically about discussing about the periodic trends the periodic properties of elements but you know mendeleev was the one who initiated the periodic table who gave the periodic table okay so the, for the first time he was mendeleev now so according to mendeleev according to according to mendeleev what was his periodic table based on it follows this principle that the properties of the elements are a periodic function of atomic weight what do you refer to as the word periodic function everybody or i would say in other terms what is periodicity any idea what is periodic function or what is periodicity it is basically the repetition of properties it is basically what it is basically the repetition of the properties physical and the chemical properties so that means if you are placing some elements in the same group there is a repetition of the properties of that elements in the group right so basically they are periodic function of what they are a periodic function of their atomic weight that it means it only and only depends upon what atomic weight clear everyone clear with these ncert key points very good now few more ncert key points with regard to this mendeleev arranged elements in horizontal rows and vertical columns of a table in order of their increasing atomic weight in such a way that the elements with similar properties occupied the same vertical column or group that means if we are talking about a certain group for example these were the groups the vertical groups and these were the columns that uh, sorry these were the groups that were columns and if i'll talk about here these were your periods these were your periods and these were your groups and each group contained similar elements each group contained similar 
elements in it, right? Repeating again, Mendeleev arranged elements in horizontal rows and vertical columns of a table in order of their increasing atomic weight in such a way that the elements with similar properties occupied the same vertical column or group. Now, Mendeleev's system of classifying elements was more elaborative than that of Lothar Mayer's. Now, what was about Lothar Mayer curve? Yes. Ma'am, again you are repeating the topic. Yes, it's time to revise as well, no? So, Lothar Mayer curve was based upon a graph of atomic volume and atomic weight. Yes, students, do you remember about Luther Mayer's curve? He gave some points that the peak positions are being assigned by the alkali metals, the bottom position are being assigned by the D block elements, the ascending and the descending position, yeah. So he basically explained about the positions of the elements. Now, he fully recognized the significance of periodicity and used broader range of physical and chemical properties to classify the elements. He is talking about Mendeleev that it is some much more better than that of Luther Mayer's curve. Next, in particular, uh, Mendeleev relied this on the similarities in the empirical formulas and the properties of compound formed by the elements. So he basically, you know, put some emphasis on the uh, part that about the properties, right, of the elements that they exhibit. Now, few more NCRT highlight. He realized that some of the elements did not fit in it with his scheme of classification if the order of atomic weight was strictly followed. So now here comes the demerit that when Mendeleev was basically assigning all the elements according to his principle, he saw that according to atomic weight still now he is not able to fit some of the elements. So it was basically seen as you have seen according to atomic weight now only we have discussed about nickel and cobalt, argon and potassium. So, that was not basically following the law of Mendeleev that according to increasing atomic weight, you should place animal elements, but they were not able to do so. Yeah. Now, students, he ignored the order of atomic weight thinking that the atomic measurements might be incorrect. So, he thought in that way, right? And placed the elements with similar properties together. He thought that they have similar properties, so he placed them together. But yes, uh, that was the not correct criteria. The correct criteria should be increasing atomic weight according to him. So, he basically forgot his principle and he just followed the characteristic concept. Now, for example, iodine with lower atomic weight than that of tellurium, okay, was placed in group number 7th over here along with fluorine, chlorine, bromine because of similar properties and uh, similarities in properties. So, yet this is one more example which was given to you. So, now students, you have a lot of examples that you have to study. For example, the examples I am mentioning over here, you have to keep in mind because they are again and again asked in your question papers, right? Okay. Don't worry, you will see the questions itself, you will get to know about more in detail. See, now you will be thinking that, ma'am, why we are reading the NCRT highlights? See, what happens is, uh, we always say that, please read NCRT. So, sometimes what happens, students just think, okay, we will read in future, we will do that on my own, but let us focus. See, students, I don't want that you should miss your NCRT key points, which are, you know, very, very much required for inorganic chemistry. So, that's why I brought it over here, so that we can read it together and I can explain you line to line. Yeah. Now, at the same time, keeping his primary aim for arranging the elements of similar properties in the same group, he proposed that some of the elements were still undiscovered. Now, we already know about it and therefore left several gaps. So, this was, you know, the very, I would say, uh, the best, uh, you know, merit with regard to Mendeleev that he discovered the elements. You know, but he didn't knew the name, but yes, he already predicted about it, right? So, for example, they have already given you over here, both gallium and germanium students were unknown at the time Mendeleev periodic table was published. Uh, okay, he left the gap under aluminium and the gap under silicon and called these elements as Eka aluminium and Eka silicon, ma'am. Yes, Mendeleev predict predicted not only the existence of gallium and germanium, but also described some of their general physical properties. These elements were discovered later on. Yes, everybody, please read it till then I'll drink a glass of water. Everybody, mark it in your NCRT. <coughs> Done, students. This is important one. Moving on to the next one, this was basically, uh, as I've told you, Mendeleev predict predicted the, you know, elements that gallium and germanium in future will be uh, 
will be discovered and he named it as eco aluminum eco silicon so the properties which he thought would be have would have been of eco aluminum and would have been eco silicon by thinking of aluminum and silicon was in actual similar to the gallium and germanium that were discovered so basically see he predicted about eco aluminum these atomic weight like 68 and in general gallium atomic weight was found out to be 70 nearly so close to each other he predicted the density as 5.9 and in general it came out to be 5.9 94 okay he told melting point should be low and it came out of this he uh, basically gave a general formula for the oxide now how is oxide formed when it is reacting with oxygen though so e here is your element so it will form e2o3 and it formed ga2o3 right he also predicted the formula of chloride that is ecl3 and in general gacl3 was seen so basically he predicted some properties and it came out to be true in future yeah similarly he predicted some properties of eco silicon for example he predicted atomic weight to be 72 and in general when germanium was discovered the value came out to be 72.6 he predicted that density should be 5.5 but in general it came out to 5.3 approximately equal then he predicted the melting point should be highest and it came out to be this value similarly he predicted the formula of oxide and chloride he predicted the formula of oxide as eo2 and it came out to be geo2 he predicted about chloride so it became ecl4 and in general it came out to be gcl4 so all of the things that he predicted came out to be true so this was the very good demerit of mendeleev's periodic table clear students right now students we are going to start with the next law as we know now that mendeleev periodic law is failed now came into account the moseley's law according to moseley let me explain and then we are going to read it from the ncert and some key points so according to moseley what happened he took some metal he took some you know uh, element over here he took some metal element over here what he observed that when he passed some electrons he striked some electrons on the surface of this metal over here okay he took different metals and he struck the uh, you know electrons over here so when he struck the electrons over here he saw x rays are being passed repeating again he took basically over here uh, you know a metal surface or i would say an element what happened he bombarded some electrons on it when he did bombardment of electrons x rays were passed out what happened x rays were passed out and x rays had some frequency it had some frequency so he established a relationship over there and he got to know that when he plotted the graph of the root of frequency with the atomic mass it was not a linear scope let me tell you when he when he uh, you know uh, took different elements okay and different x rays were predicted out which had different frequencies so what he thought that root of frequency when he was making a graph based upon the atomic mass see till now all the periodic tables were based upon atomic mass all the discovery were dependent up upon atomic mass so when he made this graph no the curve came out to be like this which was not linear like this or somewhat like this okay which was not linear so what he did he replaced with atomic mass and over here root of frequency with atomic number so he saw that a straight line a linear line is observed that means that means this is basically a periodic function of their atomic number not atomic mass so let us read it what i what i have explained you over here moseley studied the frequency of the x ray produced by the bombardment of a strong beam of electron on metal target this was a metal surface we bombarded some electrons and the x rays came out which had certain frequencies so he basically draws you some few graphs when he took different different metals he saw that frequency root of frequency with regard to atomic weight was not a linear curve that means it is not directly dependent upon it right so that means when he plotted with atomic number it came as linear scope that means the all the periodic functions all the periodic properties don't depend upon the atomic weight that means the physical and chemical properties are not a periodic function of atomic weight they are a periodic function of atomic number okay so let us read again moseley studied the frequency of x ray produced by the bombardment of a strong beam of electron on the metal target he found that square root of frequency of x rays that is root v is directly proportional to the number of effective nuclear charge that is z okay so this is going to be like this he observed this that it is directly proportional so we obtained a linear curve right that is to the atomic number but not to the atomic mass everybody just put a huge star over here it is not dependent upon the atomic mass it is dependent upon what man upon atomic number that is z okay clear everyone as the nuclear charge that means z of an atom uh, is equivalent to the atomic number 
So it is saying it is directly proportional to effective nuclear charge, which is in general the atomic number. Clear, students. So this was basically given by Mosley. Also, in terms of you have to write a b as taken as constant, as it explains the graph. Root v is equals to a z minus b. A and b over here are constant. That means root v is directly dependent upon z. That means it is directly dependent upon atomic number. Clear. Now, students, this was the graph basically which shows us that relationship that root of frequency is directly proportional to atomic number. That means, according to him, now, according to him, the physical and the physical and chemical properties are a periodic function of. atomic number atomic number that means they are a periodic function of z i guess this is clear to each and every one of you everybody please write it down if you want to draw this graph you can you can see they are directly depend dependent because it is a linear curve students everybody write it down clear students very good now now here comes your periodic table of elements students here comes your periodic table of elements which is long form of periodic table which was given with the help of mosley now let me give you a brief introduction over here let us take a general uh, periodic table and i will explain with the help of that to you yeah see students your periodic table will look like this so basically in this periodic table these are your s block elements these are your s block elements okay these are your p block p block elements these are your p block elements these are your d block elements d block elements and these are your f block elements let me tell you this one is basically your lanthanoid series and this one is your actinoid series that means your f block ones Okay, students, these are your S block elements, D block elements, P block elements, and these are your lanthanoid series. One more thing, let me tell you why it is S block, why it is D block, or P block, or F block as per the last electron. If the last electron enters into S subshell, it will be S block. If it enters into P, it will be P block. If it enters into D subshell, it will be D block. If it enters into F, it will be F block. One more thing, let us count the periods and the rows. So, periods are 1. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7 and this is of 6th and 7th only. These comes after this element. I will let you know, no need to worry. I will let you know, no need to worry. So, these are your periods. The first period contains how many elements? 1 and 2. Second period contain how much? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Third will contain 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8. Fourth will contain how many elements? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Clear students? I guess now it is clear to each and every one of you. So these are your periods. The first period, second period, third period, fourth period, fifth and so on. If you have to see the groups over here. So this is your group number first, your group number second. Yes, everybody. This is a group number first, your group number second. This is a group number 13th, 14th, 15th, 16th, 17th and 18th. And these are your, your D-block elements. 3rd, 4th, 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th, 11th and 12th. Clear everyone? Clear everyone? Now let me bring it to you over here as well. These are the things which I have already told you. Now you see a lot of elements over here. A lot of elements over here. Let us see. These that you are able to see are your alkali metals. S block are referred to as your alkali. S block first group is referred to as your alkali metals. It is your alkali metals. The second group over here, 
second group over here this one is alkaline earth metals these are alkaline earth metals clear these are your alkali metals these are your alkaline earth metals both of them comprises and forms your s block elements yes everyone clear everyone now here you can clearly see that they have provided you all the colors over here and they have distinguished you these are your lanthanoid series these are your actinoid series one thing you need to note it over here students that you can see here here 57th element will come that will be lanthanum after lanthanum after 57 here you can see it's 72 written over here right so from 58th element to 71 element are your lanthanoid series similarly here you will see here actinium is there here 89th element is there after 89 it is 104 so from 90 to 103 will lie under the actinide series one thing remember see how it is 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 then 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 then comes 19 20 21 22 23 24 in such a way it is arranged but over here after 57 it's directly 72 after 89 it's directly 104 because other elements are kept in these series lanthanoid and actinoid are in f block so they are kept separately over here clear students now i will be telling you who what are metals what are non metals what are metalloids in the upcoming session but yes till now you should know about the very basic thing of periodic table now i will make you learn all the elements which elements will lie under s block which elements will lie under p block which will lie under d block with the help of tricks we will learn all of these elements all together the complete periodic table we are going to learn in now few more minutes everybody before that please write these basic things down over here so that i can start with that as well everybody write and down so that we can start <coughs> done great now students let us start with the trick in order to learn that so before the trick there are some more key points for you to understand that periods about about the periods and the groups see periods basically there are seven periods numbered as first second third fourth fifth and sixth seventh there are groups there are 18 groups so periods if i'll talk about if i'll talk about first period i told you there were two elements that is very short period then we saw that two groups contain eight, eight elements they were short period then came 18 18 elements group that were long period then came 32 elements it was very long period and last was 19 which was incomplete period so this was according to they are also referred to as these names moving to the ncrt highlight we should also cover the ncrt highlight with regard to the mosley law before moving on to the trick section so Henry Moseley observed Henry Moseley observed regularities in the characteristic X-ray spectra of the elements. A plot of frequency, V is frequency of X-ray against atomic number gave a straight line, not the slow, uh, not the plot of frequency with atomic mass. I already told you that with atomic mass you didn't obtain a straight curve, but yes, with atomic number you obtained that. He thereby showed that atomic number is more fundamental property of element than its atomic mass. So Mendeleev's periodic table therefore was modified now. The physical and chemical properties very very important. The physical and chemical properties are periodic function of their atomic number not atomic mass. Done students done. Shall we start now with the next segment if it is done students. Yes, students, shall we start? So, now comes our trick section where we are going to write the tricks. How you have to learn all the elements, students. So, shall we start with group number first? So, we are starting with group number first which contains hydrogen, lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium and francium. Hydrogen students is represented as H. Lithium is represented as Li. Sodium is represented as capital N small a now see hydrogen starts with H so written as H lithium with Li so Li but sodium with Na with Na not with Sa Na potassium with K so many of the students do get confused now rubidium with Rb cesium as Cs and francium as Fr okay what is the trick to remember this his last sun because it is sodium, no? His last son plays rugby, cricket, and football. 
here and is an extra word everybody write down so that we can move on to the next trick yeah sorry about the spellings so clear do remember here sun don't say as s so is the symbol no it is sodium as na now you will say ma'am how is the atomic number you have to remember remember the atomic number of the first element it's 1 so now what you have to do is you have to add 2 8 8 18 18 9 9 then 32 see if you'll add 2 you'll get 3 if you'll add 8 you'll get 11 if you'll add 8 you'll get 19 if you'll add 18 you'll get 37 if you'll add 8 you'll get 55 and at last write it like this at last if you're going to add it here 32 you will get 87 so this is the trick for see for s block remember always remember for s block the trick is 2 8 8 18 18 32 this is for s block elements and the trick is his last son plays rugby cricket and football clear everyone write down so that we can move on to the next one the next one is the group number second again this is s block element but yes here trick will start from 8 8 18 18 32 18, clear and it starts with beryllium as be magnesium as mg calcium as ca strontium as sr barium as ba and radium as ra now the atomic number always remember of beryllium so you should learn at least the uh, atomic numbers till 20 elements and after that you can apply the magic trick so apply the magic trick 8 8 18 18 32 see Si, 4 plus 8 is 12 12 plus 8 is 20 20 plus 18 is 38 38 plus 18 is 56 56 plus 32 is 88 clear now the trick for this is but but mrs calcium now this is the name of a lady okay mrs calcium calcium's son let me take a dark color mrs mrs calcium son beat him in him in his extra word in rugby okay so in the previous trick was his last son plays rugby cricket and football but mrs calcium sons beat him in rugby clear everybody clear magic trick is clear this was about s block elements now we are going to start with what we are going to start with the p block elements first let us do the trick for p block elements first clear everyone and the trick basically follows the magic number follows as 8 18 18 and then 32 here trick will start from here trick will start from 8 18 18 and 32 so the very first for group number 13th is boron and this is referred to as boron family represented as b then is aluminium gallium indium thallium so the trick is trick is bag it bag it is the trick bag it is the trick bag it so b a g i t e. bag it is the trick from b it is boron from a it is aluminium for gallium is uh, g and it is indium and thallium how to represent you can see boron is represented as capital b aluminium as capital a small l gallium as capital g small a indium as capital i small n and thallium as capital t small l okay this is group number 13th the p block element now moving on to group number 14 shall we start with group number 14 first of all write this down first of all write this down yes everybody then we can go for group number 14 group 14 is your carbon family yes everybody <laughs> okay now this is group number 14 the carbon family from c it is carbon from s it is silicon from g it is germanium from s n it is tin and from p b it is lead students do get confused of tin and lead see the symbols okay the trick is carbon and silicon chips now chips r is extra word this is extra word this is extra word carbon and silicon chips in germany not r in will come in germany r doped is extra word r doped with 
टिन एंड लेड सी विच आर एक्स्ट्रा एम अंडरलाइनिंग इट सो कार्बन एंड सिलिकन चिप्स इन जर्मनी आर डोप्ड विथ टेन एंड लेड दिस इज द ट्रिक टू रिमेंबर दिस अगेन द एटॉमिक नंबर डू रिमेंबर द एटॉमिक नंबर ऑफ द वेरी फर्स्ट एलिमेंट एंड देन यू हैव टू यूज द ट्रिक एट एटीन एटीन थर्टी टू द ट्रिक फॉर पी ब्लॉक इज एट एटीन एटीन थर्टी टू सो सिक्स प्लस एट इज फोर्टीन फोर्टीन प्लस एटीन इज थर्टी टू थर्टी टू प्लस एटीन इज फिफ्टी फिफ्टी प्लस थर्टी टू इज एटी टू क्लियर एवरी वन कार्बन सिलिकन जर्मेरियम टेन एंड लेड दिस इज ग्रुप नंबर फोर्टीन द कार्बन फैमिली क्लियर एवरी वन येस एवरी वन ओके नाउ कम्स ग्रुप नंबर फिफ्टीन नाउ कम्स वॉट ग्रुप नंबर फिफ्टीन द नाइट्रोजन फैमिली नाइट्रोजन स्टार्ट विद कैपिटल एंड फॉस्फोरस then comes arsenic antimony and bismuth students do get confused with antimony it is represented as sp clear everyone see tin is represented as sn so don't get confused it is represented as sb now atomic numbers remember of nitrogen 7 add the number 8 it will 15 then add 18 it will be 33 then add 18 it will be 51 then add 32 it will be 83 clear now the trick for this is newland पाकिस्तान ऑस्ट्रेलिया सिंग्स ब्यूटिफुली ओके सो न्यूलैंड पाकिस्तान ऑस्ट्रेलिया सिंग्स ब्यूटिफुली दे हैव वेरी दे हैव सिंगर्स हु सिंग्स सो ब्यूटिफुली दिस इज अ ट्रिक स्टूडेंट्स ओके so from n it's newland from p it is pakistan from as it is australia from sb it is sings from bi it is beautifully clear everyone this is group number 15 group number 15 okay now starting with group number 16 the oxygen family it starts with oxygen sulfur selenium tellurium and polonium oxygen is represented as o sulfur as capital s selenium as s Uh, capital S small e, tellurium as capital T small e, polonium as capital P small u. So again the magic number. Remember of oxygen that is eight. Atomic number add eight, eighteen, eighteen, thirty two. So it is eight plus eight sixteen. Sixteen plus eighteen is thirty four. Thirty four plus eighteen is fifty two. Fifty two plus thirty two is eighty four. Now what is the trick? O oh, yes. Now this S basically comes over here. O oh, yes, like this. Okay. O oh, yes. telephone this is the trick now let us see this from o it is oxygen from now yes basically ends with s and s so it is sulfur selenium and telephone te is the tellurium and po basically is phone okay so o oh, yes phone so this is oxygen sulfur selenium tellurium and polonium this is about group number 16 now comes group number 17 students this you have to learn directly this is fluorine chlorine bromine and iodine these are your halogen family halogen family so no need of trick over here it is learnt directly fluorine chlorine bromine iodine quite simple remember atomic number of the very first add 8 18 18 so it is 9 plus 8 is 17 17 plus 18 is 35 35 plus 18 is 53 okay now students comes the last group that is group number 18 the inert gases helium neon argon krypton xenon and radon right yes students so this starts with 8 8 18 18 32 this does not matches the you know the magic numbers for the rest of the groups but yes 8 8 18 18 32 in the rest of it was 8 18 18 32 it starts from 8 8 18 18 32 so it is also learnt as it is as it is helium neon argon krypton xenon radon because again and again electronic configuration you may have done about them right so yes you have to learn it directly the group number 17 and 18 now students come the periods if you'll see the periodic table over here let us come to the periodic table what have we learnt till now so we basically have learnt this this group this group and these groups over here yes now it's time to learn these d blocks from left towards right in such a way we were now learning like this now we will learn along the period of the d block elements along the period in the d block elements quite clear now coming back to that so the very first trick comes out to be for the scandium one 
for this period with the atomic number 21 this is 21 22 23 24 25 26 27 28 29 30 so this starts from 21 to 30 21st element is scandium then is titanium vanadium chromium manganese iron cobalt nickel copper and zinc clear these are the elements and these are the representative symbols now the trick to remember is scary tiny vicious creatures may fear cow and nice cute zebra repeating again scary tiny vicious creatures may fear cows and nice cute zebras okay everybody write it down for this period you can clearly observe it you can clearly see in the periodic table let me show you see from here Yes, now we are going to do for the next period. That means from yttrium we are going to start. From atomic number 39 till atomic number 48 we are going to learn. Elements are yttrium, zirconium, niobium, molybdenum, technetium, ruthenium, ruhedium, palladium and then a silver and cadmium. Okay, clear? Now, you have to learn one atomic number, then you have to write directly 39, 34, uh, 39, 40, 41, 42 in such a way. What is the trick? Yes, zebras never. This is a different line now. But most technicians run rhymes purely sweet and cute. But most technicians run rhymes purely sweet and cute. Now, this is quite different. See over here, if you can see um, that here run rhymes. Don't get confused. It is ruthenium and rubidium. Clear? Clear everyone? Now there is one homework for you. Create a trick for lanthanoid series. For lanthanoid series, which starts from 57. Then I already told you, see, not for lanthanoid series. This is for the next period. And the elements next will come on to the lanthanoid series. So create a trick for this series, this period, and for the next period as well. And also for lanthanoid and actinoid. So you have to create four tricks, which is kept as your homework for today. Create in your own words, okay? Create by your own students. If not, I will let you know my trick, which I have made for all of these four. So yes, you can write the elements. I'll give you one one minute in each and every case and then we are going to move on to the next part. Everybody first of all write it down. Yes, done. You have to create a trick for this. Now, create a trick for this as well. Yes, done. That's great. Now students, also create a trick for lanthanoids and actinoids. I'll write in the homework section. Now, see, Calcium is saying, Hi, Barium, let's practice some questions. And what Barium says, Yes, I'm ready. Are you ready, my shimmering stars? Shall we start with the question segment? Yes, ma'am. So, here is the very first question. Which of the following is incorrect explanation about Mendeleev's periodic law? Incorrect, incorrect explanation. A. Mendeleev arranged elements in horizontal rows only. B. Mendeleev arranged elements with increasing atomic weight. See, Mendeleev's system of classing elements was more elaborative than that of Lothar, while D, both A and B. So, you have to tell me the incorrect explanation. See, Mendeleev arranged elements in horizontal rows? No. Not only in horizontal, but yes, in vertical columns also. So, he is saying only in horizontal rows, this is incorrect statement. Hence, answer is option number A. If you'll see the other option, Mendeleev arranged elements with increasing atomic weight, this is right. Uh, he also was more elaborative than Lothermere curve, this is also right. So, A is the incorrect answer. Let us see the next question. Which basic concept was used by Mendeleev for organizing the elements? Which basic concept? A. They organize only metals. B. They organize only non-metals. C. They organize both metals and non-metals according to increasing atomic masses. D. None of these. See, the basic concept was you have to arrange the elements according to their increasing atomic weight or increasing atomic mass because the physical and chemical properties are a periodic function of their atomic mass. So, it is not A, not B, but yes, it is C that it is based upon increasing atomic mass. So, answer comes out to be option number C. Clear everyone? Let us see the next question now. Which element was named as Eka silicon in Mendeleev classification of elements? A. Germanium. B. Gallium. C. Thallium. D. Selenium. So, see, Eka aluminium is gallium. Eka silicon is germanium. So, Eka silicon is germanium. Answer comes out to be option number A. Quite easy. A direct question. 
नेक्स्ट इज द स्टेटमेंट दैट इज नॉट करेक्ट फॉर पीरियोटिक क्लासिफिकेशन ऑफ एलिमेंट्स इज ए द प्रोपर्टीज ऑफ एलिमेंट्स आर द पीरियोडिक फंक्शन ऑफ द एटॉमिक नंबर बी नॉन मेटेलिक एलिमेंट्स आर लेसर इन नंबर देन द मेटेलिक वन सी द फर्स्ट आयनाइजेशन एनर्जीज ऑफ द एलिमेंट्स अ लॉन्ग पीरियड डू नॉट वेरी इन अ रेगुलर मैनर विद इंक्रीज इन एटॉमिक नंबर डी फॉर ट्रांजिशन एलिमेंट्स डी सबशला फिल्ड विद इलेक्ट्रॉन्स मोनोटॉनिकली विद इंक्रीज इन एटॉमिक नंबर विद इंक्रीज इन एटॉमिक मास सी दिस ऑप्शन इज सम वट इन करेक्ट मीन्स नॉट रिटर्न टाइप्ड प्रॉपरली ऑल्सो आई हैव नॉट एक्सप्लेन यू येट नाउ अबाउट आयनाइजेशन एनर्जी सो वी विल डू दिस क्वेश्चन इन द अपकमिंग सेगमेंट वेन वी विल स्टडी अबाउट आयनाइजेशन एनर्जी so let us read the next question the period number in the long form of periodic table is equal to a magnetic quantum number of any element of period b atomic number of an element of period c maximum principal quantum number of any element of period d maximum azimuthal quantum number of any element of period so let me tell you the period number basically is your shell number that is your small n that means it is about principal principal quantum number this you have studied in your second chapter so over here option number c is going to be the right answer maximum principal quantum number of any element of period now comes homework first of all first homework is create a trick for lanthanoid and actinoid and then about both of the periods the period number 7th and the 8th for sorry 6th and the 7th not 7th and 8th it was 6th and the 7th one yeah and next is questions question in next slide so let us see your first see uh, consider this as your question number first lanthanoid one actinoid one trick is question number 2 for 6th period is question number 3 okay that means for that period and for 7th one is question number 4 okay the which i have already given you i will attach it after the slide and then is from the next question we are starting now i will be starting from question number 5 this is question 5 as a homework question is which of the following is incorrect a henry mosley observed regularities in characteristic x ray spectra of elements b a plot of frequency of x ray emitted against atomic number give a straight line c the atomic number of the element is equal to the number of neutrons in a neutral element D electronic configuration of an atom determines physical and chemical properties okay so this is the question number 5th as homework pause the video write the answer in the comment section next comes question number 6th as a homework all the s block elements of periodic table are placed in the groups a is first a and second a b is third a and fourth a c is b groups and d is fifth a and seventh a okay so you very well know about the periodic table already i have shown you the image Question seventh is as a homework. All the elements in group in a periodic table have same a atomic number, b electronic configuration, c number of electrons in the outermost shell, or number of electrons for bonding. While d is atomic weight. Clear, students? So yes, this ends our today's class over here. I hope so. This class was very helpful for you, and you enjoyed the session a lot. Now we shall be meeting in the next lecture. Till then, keep smiling, keep learning. Do write the answers in the chat section. Thank you so much, my dear students, and have a good day.